Ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to another beautiful, another exciting edition of Gospel Drum. My name is Doris Hatanga. I'm going to be your host today. The Bible says in Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him with the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. We have a beautiful testimony to share with you. When we come back, we're going to hear from Minister Mercy about what God has done in her life. Stay tuned. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you need. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you need. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you need. Jesus is on the main line now. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you need. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you need. My Savior is on the main line. Tell him what you need. Jesus is on the main line now. When you want a blessing, tell him what you need. When you feel this call. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you need. Jesus is on the main line now. Welcome back to Gospel Drum. For those of you just tuning in now, my name is Doris Atanga. I'm going to be your host. We have a beautiful testimony, and we have a guest here in the house, Minister Mercy Kessie. You are welcome to Gospel Drum. Thank you. You are welcome. Woman of God, you have such a beautiful testimony that I think that the world has to know. You know, the world has to hear what God has done. But before we get to your testimony, let's hear about what, you know, you're doing for God. I see you're here. You have a ministry, faith, healing, and Deliverance Prayer Ministry. Can you tell us a little bit about this ministry? Praise the Lord. Amen. I thank the Lord for this opportunity that has been given to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I give him the praise. I am a woman who just loves the Lord. I have been called by the Lord to share what exactly he is doing with me. And... Uh, Yes, as the founder of that faith, prayer, healing, and uh, deliverance ministry, it came as a result of what God has dealt with me. Amen. At times, we just want to do things our own way. But when the Lord has his hands upon you, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, at his appointed time, things will come beautifully and uh, his mission will be fulfilled in your life amen so the the healing ministry is this like um it's like is it a, like a church or how does this work in case somebody wants to you know to to be part of what you're doing thank you mm -hmm. thank you doris mm -hmm. um, um it's good to know this is not a church okay it is not even a denomination okay but i'm operating under uh uh, campus of a church okay. where I pastor as a, uh, 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 as a pastor. This church is called National Wesleyan Church. Okay. But this ministry is separate from the church. Okay. And this ministry, the background of this ministry is a non-governmental. It welcomes people from all denomination. It welcomes people from every background. It welcomes people from every situation, every aff afflictions, mm -hmm. every trial mm -hmm. that they, they are confronted with. Mm -hmm. They are highly welcome. Okay. And the main reason why it's based is in that church is for safety reasons. Okay. Being in a church premises gives us that ground to really operate. Okay. But as I said, it's a separate entity from the church. Okay, so how do you hold your meetings? Is it like monthly? So in case somebody is curious and somebody is thinking about faith, you know, one of the things that I see attract a lot of people to church is healing, deliverance. Right. Right. And, you know, that, that's, that's something that's, you know, people really... So how do you work that out? Yes. 
With this um, uh, set, uh, prayer ministry, we operate every Tuesdays okay. from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. That is the standard time for the ministry. But when we come, we are led by the Holy Spirit. At times, we, 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 we go even above 9 p.m. as the Spirit leads us. Mm -hmm. So when somebody has a, uh, 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 um, any um, uh, trial, affliction, condition, infirmities that um, uh, needs God's intervention, can call. Okay. If that person cannot make it on that Tuesday to be there in person, I am available. You can give me a call. I will pray with you. For the word of God, it says that when two or three are gathered in the name of the Lord, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Amen. And whatever we lose, it is loose in heaven. Amen. So if people who are walking and they cannot join us on Tuesday sessions, you are free to call. And I will pray with you. And uh, the warriors will be there for you as well. Amen. You know, Minister Mercy, I, I, I would like to talk to you a little bit so that you help me understand the challenges that you might face. But you know, when Paul was ministering to the Corinthians and he was telling me that, he was saying that he received help from the Macedonians. He received help from other people. I didn't want to burden the people, right. which, which takes me to my next question. There's a lot of giving yes. when a woman of God wants to give out mm -hmm. of what God has put in their heart. Mm -hmm. So how do people receive your ministry in the community in which you're operating? That's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. That's good because this ministry is for the community. And uh, as you rightly said it, it's just the birth. It's just about six months now that the ministry is in, in operation. Mm -hmm. And we are going about with a documentation aspect of it. Because, you know, the country in which we are is always good for things to be transparent. Right. It's good to keep records. And it's good to be accountable for anything that he or she that God has blessed to be a blessing in the ministry should be accountable for. Right. So we are working on that path mm -hmm. as uh, 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 the paper works in order that this ministry being called a non-governmental organization, mm -hmm. affiliation with an orphanage in Cameroon okay. and uh, a foundation for the less privileged in Cameroon, mm -hmm. all these documents will come in place in the sense that whatever any man or a woman God has laid in their hearts to help they will be uh, given records and be met in such a way that they will understand that whatever they sow in the ministry okay. will be used for that ministry. Okay. I will further mm -hmm. expand on this in the sense that the vision of this ministry is to help the less privileged, okay. the poor, and those after God's heart. Okay, so that's more like an extension of the faith healing ministry, yes. deliverance ministry. You're not just dealing with the sick, the, you mm. know, the, the, those who are afflicted, but yes. further in other countries. Yes. So how do you spread the word? How, how do people get to know about you? Amen. That's a very good question. When I came in America uh, in uh, two, uh, 1999, I declared to God that as my feet touch the soil of this land, mm -hmm. I shall be a blessing into his kingdom. Amen. And uh, I have honored that vow with the Lord in the sense that every two years I go back home. When I say home, it's in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. Okay. But looking forward in other countries, mm -hmm. I've been to Cameroon, I've been to Nigeria, mm -hmm. organizing crusades mm -hmm. and bringing the poor together. Okay. Expanding the kingdom of God through organizing organizations of crusades and of feeding the poor Amen. providing clothing and things for shelters mm -hmm. and as well orphanages so this ministry absolutely is to put joy put a smile on those that for real god they are after god's heart amen i'm i'm going to interrupt you for a minute that's, that's one thing I know about the kingdom is the heart. 
if you are coming to America and you, you, you know, you're, you're declaring, you're telling God that you want to be useful in the kingdom. I want to believe that you, you, you're going to be useful beginning in Jerusalem and you're going to go to all the outer parts, yes. which means that in America itself, you are going to allow God to use you. Amen. So because we know we live in a nation that has opened its doors to us. And sometimes Absolutely. you look back, it's like, well, what are you giving? Why did God bring you over here? God could yes. have done the same job. Yes. through you in Africa, in Africa without you coming over here. Right. So I'm, I'm really happy to hear you say, you, you, I mean, you openly declared, and you know, that was your, your, your covenant with God that you, you, know, you want to be used of God mm -hmm. you know, in, in, um, in every way that God will want to. Mm -hmm. So now, people who come to your meetings, is it by word of mouth that they, you know, people are just hearing what's happening, or do you have another forum that you get to tell the world? Because people got to know what Amen. you're doing. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Minister Doris, on the Tuesday sessions, when people come, right. this is a time we have like a one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. where we get to know them and to find out what really is their issue. Okay. And if it's a problem that it entails a series of fasting and praying, we will do what we can do at that moment and follow up till we see a result wonderful and to those that are just open because this ministry the background of this ministry I will say the fate of it is based on my testimony which I will share later okay which is divine healing amen some are healed instantly when we pray for them and some when we follow up things happen amen. there's a lot of testimonies that if I sit here to Share these testimonies. I think we're going to keep going over and over and over and uh, the time is going to cut us short. Amen. But God has done tremendous things in the life of his children. I have a case right now which we give glory unto God. This woman is 32 years old. She has attempted suicide 13 times. Wow. But God is faithful. I stumbled. God cross the woman along my path but today she was there to testify that God is faithful Amen. the voices that were coming in to take her life she no longer hear those voices she no longer uh, 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 gets those um, uh, 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 desire to take away a life wonderful life that God has blessed her so today is a blessing. Amen. We do a lot on ground. Amen. We meet. Amen. 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 We're going to take a short break. Um, this is just beautiful. If each minister of the gospel will reach out to one person at a time, we'll have less suicide, less homicides, less problems in the society. This is Minister Mercy from Faith Healing and Deliverance Prayer Ministry giving us, we are, when we come back, we're going to hear this beautiful testimony. That's one of the many testimonies that God has brought in her life. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Gospel Drum. Again, my name is Doris Atanga, and the Bible says again in Revelation 12, 11, and they were overcome by the word of their testimony. Testimonies play a vital role in the body of Christ. And this beautiful testimony we are about to hear from Minister Mercy, you know, I, I love the scripture that says that freely you have received and freely give. Let's hear what God freely gave you out of the abundance of his mercy. Thank you, Minister Doris. I really appreciate what God is doing in my life. Amen. As a child of God, when you say you are filled with the Spirit, born and sanctified by the Holy Spirit, it will come a time in your life where that faith will be tested. Absolutely. And... Uh, <laughs> We don't know what type of test the Lord will bring your way. But as a child of God, I just say, trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. Right. But in everything, acknowledge him mm -hmm. and he will direct your path. That's right. Be it an affliction, be it a trial, whatever the circumstances is, because it happened to me. And my beautiful testimony is that which I was healed from leukemia, AML, gene mutation. Wow. What's... Now, this is something... That's not too common. All right? That's yes. not too common to hear that people get healed like that. Were you a Christian when you got struck by leukemia? Were you a Christian then? Yes. So now, now that takes us somewhere. Okay. So, I mean, how did you feel? Prayer warrior, fasting, loving the Lord and everything, and then you receive a bad report. Right. How did you handle that? Right. That's a very good question. And that's the reason why I am sitting here to let anybody who is listening to this testimony of mine should understand. How did you handle it? How you handle a situation that is above your imagination determines how far you can go. Amen. If you are afraid of a situation, you're going to be paralyzed. And eventually, what you're afraid of will come upon you. Yeah, because Satan just loves to use fear. Amen. Once you entertain it, that's his weapon. Okay, your fear is gone through the yes. window. <laughs> yes. But we have a weapon as a child of God, mm. which is what we call faith. Amen. And you know, faith is the substance of things. You hope for, but evidence you've not seen. Right. That is all that I had. I held on the Lord. When the report came, December 10th, 2012, that I had leukemia. I said to the doctors, thank you doctors, that's your report. But I have somebody who has a final say in this life. Amen. And that person is my God. So, the way I handled it, I asked God for strength. I asked God for wisdom. I asked God for, 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 for him to give me a grace to trust the doctors, to trust the nurses as they go along with my treatment. Amen. And it worked out for me. Amen. Amen. So, with my case, to those who know what is leukemia, AML, this is an acute myeloid leukemia. It kills in a split second. One week, two weeks, you are gone. Wow. But there's another type of leukemia, which is a chronic. It can linger. But God, this was a test of my faith to see if I am going to depend on that God which I preach, mm -hmm. which I pray people to accept him, or I'm going to just let it lie low. But God came through for me. Amen. The second day of my chemo, I got a revelation knowledge where the Lord led me to Micah, to Malachi, sorry, Malachi, chapter 4 verse 1 to 2 it says to them that fear the lord the son of righteousness 
He shall come speedingly with healing on its wings. Amen. And you shall be fattened. And you will go out and tread upon the wicked. That sounds to me like a promise. And I held on that promise. I said, God, mm. this is it for me. Amen. I am not going to go through this word anymore to look for anything. Mm -hmm. I believe your word is true. And yes, it is true because I fear the Lord. And he promised me healing shall come. Mm -hmm. So beloved in the Lord, whenever you get that promise in your ear, cling on to it. it. That's it. Don't let go. Mm -hmm. Voices will come in. Friends will come in. People will come in. Compromises will come in. But did you hear a word? That's right. Are you holding on that word? If you do, that's your breakthrough. Amen. Amen. So, I held on that word. And I had chemo. Intensive chemo. For six months. Wow. And I was told, even though you've had this intensive chemo, it's no cure for you. But I said, no. Somebody is there for me. Amen. I know this is a testimony for me. Amen. I am not going to die, but I shall live, live to declare, declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of this living. Amen. Amen. And I hold fast on his word. Amen. And after the six months, they told me the only way they can sustain my life is to get a bone marrow transplant. And throughout the bank, the uh, a blood bank of America, they couldn't find a match for me. Mm -hmm. And this is something to I'm standing today because as the Lord leads, it will eventually come a drive. Because us Africans, we don't know things like this that happen. Mm -hmm. But we need to get like a drive for people who can donate. Right. Because they didn't find it. My donor was spotted in Cameroon. That was another challenge for me. Ambas the embassy in America, the American embassy in Cameroon, turned her down three times. Refusing to give her a visa to come over to America to donate for me the bone marrow. And what happened? I was running out of time. And you but couldn't God, travel. You couldn't travel? And I'm just I'm just saying Nigeria. you couldn't travel. I, you know <laughs> At that point in time, I was what they call at a vegetative state. Wow. Everything was being done for me. Normally there is activities of daily living that each and every one of us can perform. I couldn't perform five. The only thing I could do is to feed myself. I was being bathed by relatives. Staff. I was being taken to the bathroom by them. I was being changed. I was incontinent and everything. I was on briefs. And I learned how to walk. That's the state at which I was. And another way around, let me say I was given up. But I held fast on the Lord. Amen. Each time he hit me, I said, let me just let go and let me go into eternity. But I said, no, Father, you spoke to me. That's when is this healing coming? Amen. When am I going to get out of this bed? When am I going to... Be back on my feet to do the things I promised I was going to do with you. I'm going to do for you. But the Lord is faithful. Amen. The Lord is faithful. Even though the American embassy in Cameroon refused giving my sister the visa, God made a way for me. He opened another door for me. My senior brother, who was a half match for me, said he was going to donate for me. And your senior brother is based here? He's here in Michigan. Okay. By name, Kosu Richard. He came in, and I said, God, this is a one-quarter match, but I know of a father. I know what Jesus did. Amen. When he fed multitude, as the word of God is said, right. from five loaves of bread and two fishes. I said, Father, I tap into that anointing. Multiply this marrow. Let it be sufficient and abundance. 
that they can keep in the reserve Amen. for somebody who is capacitated like myself. Mm -hmm. And God honored the prayer. So I got enough and we had two pints left in the bank for someone. Wow. God is awesome. Amen. God is faithful. Amen. And when I received that marrow, the melting and breaking point of my testimony was one of the evenings where I had a code, but it was re reversed. When I say a code, in the hospital, when they call a code for you, right. it means that is a point where you are lying in the hands of God yep. right there. You might come back or you just go into eternity. Mm -hmm. But right there, the rapid response was all over in my room. I didn't know. But all is that she was not responsive because when I came back, they told me you were not responsive. But what happened at that point? On my way, somewhere, I heard a voice. Where is your faith? Oh. Where is your faith? And I responded to that voice, I shall leave. I shall leave. And that's how I came up. I came out. Amen. And when I came out with that word, till today that we are talking, I am living. And Amen. I shall leave and fulfill the work of the Lord in Amen. my life till when he says, my daughter, it's over. Amen. See, one beautiful thing that you said, you know, when this all started was that you, you committed the treatments in the hands of God. A lot of times people think that faith, prayer, healing, deliverance means you don't go to the doctor. That's they think that you don't, you know, you don't have to seek medical help. Sometimes you commit them in the hands of God. So whatever they do, you know, everything that they do, you know, they Amen. are being led by the Spirit of God. And I'm also very grateful that when you heard the voice, you confessed the word of God. Amen. You spoke life Amen. to come into being, Amen. which is something that people need to know. Amen. I want you to look in the camera. There are people who, whose lives are like the valley of dead bones. They just need to speak the word. The, the guy told Jesus that just a word and I shall be healed. Amen. Just, just we, we don't word. need sermons from the Lord. We don't need, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, chapters. We just need a word to know where, you know, what direction we're taking. So speak to somebody who might be battling with, maybe with their life, their health or children or a spouse or somebody. And they just need to know what it means to stand by faith. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Doris. Mm -hmm. I just want to encourage someone out there. Who is battling with the storms of life? Listen, this life that we are having is from Jesus Christ, Him alone. His word says in Hebrew, chapter 4, verses 12 and 13, it reads, The word of God is living, it is powerful, it is a double edged sword. It pierces into the bone marrow and the dividing of spirit. Beloved in the Lord, I say this to encourage somebody. The word of God is living. Speak the word in your situation. If you don't know, just say, Jesus, I know you are the word. You were sent forth for me to be healed. You were sent forth for my sins to be blotted out. You were sent forth for me to have eternal life. And that word that you affirm with your mouth shall come to existence. And you will have life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mr. Mercy, I want to thank you so much. You know, and I would like for you to come back because there's just so much to give. And, you know, the body of Christ just needs encouragement because, you know, somebody might just listen to you now and they want to hear more. They want to hear Amen. more to be able to stand Amen. and to be able to hold on to, to their confession Amen. as they go through the challenges in life. And to our viewers, we just want to thank you for just lending your ears to hear what God has done in the life of, the, of, of this woman of God. And, uh, you know, like the Bible says, as we quoted earlier, that they were overcame by the, the, the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. This word of her, that she has testified is something that can go a long way. You can reach Minister Mercy, send us an email at staff at African Gospel Online, and we can communicate with you how you can reach her. And again, do you have anything coming up soon that the public might want to know? 
Yes. Yes, we have something coming up which we call the Community Day. It's a function that is going to take place, just like I said, uh, if you contact Minister Doris, she will give you the address and everything for the, uh, the venue. Uh, we are reaching out to the public with a lot of things. And uh, when you come in, especially, like I said, the founder of Faith um, our Prayer, Healing and Deliverance Ministry, we are open on that day from morning from 9 o'clock to 5 p.m. receiving all those who are coming in either physically uh, 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 broken, spiritually broken. We address your situation right there. But the community day is a holistic day. Come out because the fact that we are praying, taking care of the spiritual nature, there are doctors standing by to do our physicals, doing EKGs and uh, blood pressures, those standing out there to do um, uh, things concerning uh, 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 how to reach out, community things like shelters, often things, it's a whole lot that will be going on on that day, 17th of October 2015. I look forward to see those who just want to reach out and just know more about the Lord, you're highly welcome. Okay, thank you. thank you so much, Minister Grace. And that address, we're going to put that on the screen for you. We just want to wish you the best week. We go into this week with the Lord. Go into this week, you know, being embraced by the Holy Spirit. Let Him help you. Don't try to do it yourself. It's harder. But when you do it with Him, He helps you. We hope you enjoyed this testimony. We're going to bring more to you next time on Gospel Drum. Have a blessed week. Bye-bye. Packers, Vikings, Red State, Blue State. We come from different places. Uptown. But Down. when we live united, we create real lasting change in the education, income, and health of our live country. United. Real change won't happen without you. <laughs> so give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. Otherwise, you'll be that.